Hi everyone, thanks for listening to all my presentations. Today I'll be talking about Reset Osmostat. Reset Osmostat. In hyponatremia, if the patient is stable, despite changes in sodium level and the increase in water intake, and you find out that the kidney is still functioning well, I mean, the kidney is still able to dilute and concentrate urine appropriately, and when you try to give fluid that is not changing the osmolality, then suspect reset osmostat. Also, in hyponatremia, if it is a mild one, with or without symptoms of syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, and the patient is stable, despite the imbalance between the sodium and the water intake, and then everything seems to be okay, but the value of the sodium is you know, at the downward end, then suspect reset osmostat. Reset osmostat will have the following features. There are changes in normal plasma osmolality threshold, and that will be leading to a rise of sodium or a fall of the same, giving us either hypernatremia or hyponatremia. But there may or not be any symptom or symptoms. If there are no symptoms, then we don't need any treatment. But if it is symptomatic, we must treat, please. In a normal condition, ADH is not raised if osmolality is below 280 milliosmoles per kg. Since ADH is not raised, ingested water here is not retained. When more water is lost, the osmolality will then start you know, to be rising. And when it is rising above 280 milliosmoles per kg, then ADH level will start rising as well. Type C syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone is what will be addressed here. You can check my channel for that. If you check my channel for syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone 1, you are going to find the info there. Here there is hypoosmolality, meaning it is less than 280 milliosmoles per kg. We'll be dealing with hypotonic hyponatremia with sodium level less than 135 millimoles per liter. And then you have done everything like fluid restriction and salt stabilized, but it's not being corrected. Low normal plasma osmolality at 280 milliosmoles per kilogram here will trigger increased ADH at a lower plasma osmolarity. But blocking enough, there will be normal renal function. So there will be normal water load excretion and normal urine diluting capability. ADH will retain water, right? And dilute it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have hyponatremia. Hyponatremia here is because we're dealing with downward resetting of the osmostat, which is an example of one type of syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. Here specifically is type C. ADH that should be secreted at now between 280 to 285 milliosmoles per kg is now secreted at a lower value. And that is what we are addressing 
and termed as the downward resetting of the osmostat. Still on reset osmostat, downward resetting of the osmostat can also occur in hypovolemic states. And why that? The stimulus that triggers the ADH release is superimposed upon the osmoreceptor function, which means the baroreceptor stimulus to the ADH is superimposed upon osmoreceptor function. Let's get this clear. Osmoreceptors are in the apothalamus. And what are they doing there? They are sensing the osmolarity and also stimulating ADH why carotid sinus and left atrial baroreceptors can reflexly control arginine vasopressin, also known as ADH. Okay, when there is hypovolemia, and then that will be leading to water without sodium retention in the kidneys. Still on downward reciting of the osmotas. This can occur in quadriplegia. And why that? In quadriplegia, venous pulling in the legs can lead to volume depletion. Can occur in infectious conditions like tuberculosis. Also in HIV with PCP, that is pneumocystic carrying pneumonia in the past anyway, now known as pneumocystic gyrovesin pneumonia, can have reset osmostat. It can also occur in elderly, particularly people ages 60 and above, and also in sleep apnea. As a matter of fact, some people will wake up, particularly the elderly ones, will wake up in the morning and they will you know, begin to feel somehow. Then that will trigger a report to their doctors at the clinic. And by the time the electrolytes are done and everything, then we'll come down to reset osmostat. It could also occur in your body's dementia. You can check my channel for that. I have a separate presentation on that. And alcoholism, beer potomania to be specific, in psychosis, in malnutrition, and in pregnancy. You know what? Even normal pregnancy will expect you no know, serum sodium drop by about five milliequivalent per liter. How do we make diagnosis here? This is a kind of diagnosis of exclusion, meaning you have to rule out this, rule out this, rule out this, rule out that. But the individual must be volumic. So we'll start by ruling out adrenal gland insufficiency, having SCTH level or SCTH stimulation test to rule out adrenal failure. We are done, we are happy, right? No adrenal failure. Okay, what's happening to the thyroid gland? We have to rule out hypothyroidism. What is TSH T3, T4 giving us? Is TSH high? Then we are on the path to apotherosis, right? And everything is within normal range. T3, T4, fine. TSH, fine. Oh, great. Okay, what's happening to the liver? We have liver function and liver enzymes down. What is happening to the heart? We measure the you know, BP, oscotate, have you no know, cardiac enzymes done, EKG, everything, cystic examination, no fissures, right failure, and so on. Okay. Then we we'll start with history of medications already taken, history of alcohol and the rest like that. Then we will try something: fluid deprivation. Fluid deprivation must lead to a concentrated urine, but not leading to a rise in serum sodium level. So the other test we can do is we then give 10 to 15 ml per kg of water to the patient intravenously or per aura. Then in four hours time, we will check the urine level. We will expect certain results. So 
excretion is impaired in syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. And in that case, they will excrete less amount of the fluid we've given. Okay? Then normal subject will have you know, the amount that will be eliminated to be proportional to the amount taken. In recent osmostat, greater than 80% of what we have given will be excreted. The interpretation here is that syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone will lead to retention of water more than the recent osmostat. And we can also use fractional excretion of uric acid to determine this. You can check my channel for fractional excretion of sodium when it comes to renal failure. I have that already published here. Treatment. The treatment should be directed at the causative agent or agents or when back on symptomatic treatment. For example, if you are dealing with malnutrition, let's give you know, uh, the direction, the referral to nutritionist and give pamphlet or advice on balanced diet. In case of tuberculosis, we should treat with anti-tuberculous agents, rifampicin, INH, thorazinamide, and tambutol with pyridoxine. You can check my channel for tuberculosis. I've made, I think, about five or six different publications on tuberculosis alone. So check my channel for that. I'm pretty sure the treatment is also published. In psychosis, let's embark on appropriate treatment or we refer immediately. In quadriplegic patients, physiotherapy will be helpful. In alcoholism, Hmm, my friends don't want to hear that, right? You can check my channel for my full presentation on alcoholism. So, I will not waste your time on that here. In HIV with pneumocystic gyrovesin pneumonia, we should give highly active antiretroviral you know, therapy with pyrimetamine or pentamidine. You can check my channel for pyrimetamine or pentamidine already published. Okay, remember that if they have a mild to moderate hyponatremia and they are not having any symptom, then all you need to do is just to identify the reset osmostat and do nothing, no therapy. Why that? If you inadvertently increase sodium level, maybe you are overzealous and then you give salt stabilizers in addition to fluid restriction, that will increase you no know, test in them. And when there's increased test because your increased sodium level has led to a rise in ADH, they will be drinking more water. And you know what we follow. Let me repeat. Mostly they will have mild to moderate upon a treatment that will likely be asymptomatic. And if they don't have symptoms, please, there's no need to be over zero. There's nothing to do. Just tell the patient the diagnosis. This is we said osmostat and keep watching. Okay? But there should be a good relationship so that the patient will keep you know, giving feedback on how he or she is feeling, right? But no therapy. Why? Should we do it that way? If we, by mistake, inadvertently, increase the sodium level, an ADH response will occur, and that will lead to ADH increase. And when there is ADH increase, there will be increased test. And when somebody is thirsty almost all the time, then grab the water and ingest it, right? And you know what that will lead to, okay? So the key here, to good treatment of reset osmostat is the good doctor-patient relationship. That will help greatly because they may have no symptom or symptoms today, 
The next few days, they may. But when they trust the doctor and they can you know, open their heart to say everything is exactly they are feeling, then that's great. And that will help the doctor also to help the patient appropriately. So good doctor-patient relationship, we are in this together, that should be the picture that the doctor will give the patient. And the patient should you know, also admit that, okay, for him not to give me any medication today or not to tell me restrict fluid intake today doesn't mean he doesn't know what he's doing. So with that, I come to the end of this presentation. Remember to give thumbs up, share, subscribe to my channel, can suggest other topics that are bothering you that you want me to address. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it.